I am ready to design myself some embedded vision. That's right, it's going to be super cool. My machine will be able to see. I've got my awesome high-resolution camera and my super-fast video-optimized processor. The camera puts out a whole bunch of data, and of course, my processor is ready to filter and enhance and detect... Look here, the data comes gushing into my processor from the camera in this huge pipe and this huge... Oh, no. I've got a lot of data to move around here. And I'm going to need some pretty impressive connectors and standards or my fancy processor won't have anything to chew on. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Since I need to move a lot of data around reliably, I'm going straight to the experts. My guests are Tony Schiapetta and Chris Slinkman from Molex, and we're going to look at the best standards and connectors for embedded vision design. Before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find out more information about embedded vision solutions from Molex. Hi, Tony and Chris. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks. It's great to be here today. Thanks very much for having us, Amelia. So we're hearing the term embedded vision thrown around a lot these days, but it seems like there are a lot of different markets and technologies and applications covered by that term. So what are we talking about when we say embedded vision? Embedded vision refers to the practical use of computer vision in machines that understands their environment through visual means. Okay. Computer vision is the use of digital processing and intelligent algorithms to interpret meaning from images or videos. Typical applications include everyday applications such as military, medical, drones are pictured there, cameras, and wearable technologies. So when most engineers start thinking about embedded vision, they immediately start thinking about image analysis and processing, but embedded vision poses some real challenges in connectivity too, doesn't it? We've got a lot of data that needs to be moved around in a hurry before we can think about analyzing it, right? Correct. Engineers face many challenges when designing an embedded vision system. The biggest challenge is transferring image data from image sensory or camera into a processing unit for analyzing and processing. Additionally, engineers ask themselves many questions when designing embedded vision applications. What is the best way to connect a camera or image sensor to a processing unit? Are there standard camera interfaces or bus architectures that can be leveraged? Yes, so what about standards, as you mentioned? We don't have to reinvent the wheel here, do we? There must be some existing standards and interfaces that we can take advantage of. To answer these challenges, multiple industry standard camera interfaces and bus architectures have been created. Okay. For chip-to-chip -chip communication or between an image sensor and MCU, internal camera interfaces such as MIPI CSI 3. MIPI stands for Mobile Industrial Processor Interface, CSI referring to the Camera Interface Specification Third Vision. For external camera modules connecting to a PC, you might use Camera Link, USB 2.0, USB 3 Vision, IE 1394, or Gig E-Vision. We will discuss these solutions in red in more detail. Yeah, I think that MIPI CSI, I used to watch that with that Anyway, <laughs> let's dive into the internal interface problem first. Getting all that data from the sensor to the application or image processor. Tell me more about that MIPI CSI thing you mentioned. And is that one from Miami? <laughs> no, that's not the one from Miami. MIPI CSI 3 defines the interface between the camera and the application processor or image signal processor based on the unit port M interface, high speed physical interface, high bandwidth and low power, data rate scaling up to 5.8 gigs, low pin count and low EMI, optimized for mobile applications, maybe CSI 3 can run over Molex Slim Stack connectors. Okay, so now we're getting into Molex specific parts. Good. It seems like connectors would be critical here. You can't just do this with any off-the-shelf connector, right? That's correct, Amelia. When you look at what customers are looking at today, they're driving towards higher performing, 
smaller products within their applications. And that's where the Molex SlimStack family comes into play. If you take a look at the Molex SlimStack, it comes in various pitch sizes from 0.35 millimeter pitch up to a one millimeter pitch and stack heights from 0.6 millimeters all the way up to 20 millimeters. It's a surface mount product, board to board, anywhere from six circuits up to 240 circuits and from a speed perspective, all the way up to 20 gigabits per second. Got it. So tell me a bit more about what makes SlimStack cool, besides the name and the super high data rates, of course. Sure, Amelia. When looking at SlimStack, as I mentioned already with the various stack heights, the various circuit sizes, the various pitch or spacing that the product is available in, as an example, the latest Molex SlimStack is the SlimStack Armor. It's a 0.35 millimeter pitch product, which is one of the smallest available in the market, and again, can carry, in addition to 20 gigabits per second on the speed side, it can handle up to six amps worth of power, which makes it stand out among these types of products in the market. Okay, so I'm a bit of a nerd. Can we dive down and see what one of these bad boys looks like? Sure, absolutely. If you take a look at the roadmap, it's showing the various pitch sizes that we have available, the various stack heights, and the various circuit sizes. And as I mentioned, the latest being the 0.35 millimeter pitch all the way up to one millimeter pitch. And then as far as the stack height, anywhere from a 0.6 millimeter pitch all the way up to 20 millimeters. Okay, I think I've got MIPI CSI3 via SlimStack for internal camera connections down. Check. Now, what are our options for external interfaces? You mentioned one based on USB? Correct. USB 3 Vision. Okay, cool. The USB 3 Vision interface is based on the standard USB 3.0 interfaces and uses USB 3.0 ports standard on most PCs. These connectors have high bandwidth in access of 350 megabytes. Okay. Easy to use plug and play interface. Power and data over the same passive cable to five meters. More with active cables. Uses Gen I CAM generic programming interface. USB 3 vision standard for cameras is built upon the USB 3.0 specification. All right, USB vision three, cool. Now let's talk about connectors. I assume I don't want to try this with the old cheapo USB connectors I can order on eBay, right? No, no, you don't want to buy these connectors through eBay. You want to buy these through Avnet. USB 3.0 connectors are plug and play capability of USB interconnects. These connectors are most susceptible to mishandling that give rise to reliability and connectivity issues. Right. Examples include force mating over insertion or insertion at angles, tugging or wrenching the cable out from connecting to disconnecting. All right, these sound like they're industrial strength. Tell me more about them. These are industrial strength connectors. First, receptacles housings are heat resistant for temperatures up to 255 degrees Celsius, essential for the IR reflow processes. Halogen-free cable versions, connectors, and cable assemblies help customers meet environmental compliance requirements as part of their global green initiatives. All right, it sounds like this Molex USB 3 stuff is tough enough for combat or even toddlers. <laughs> Give me a rundown on what's so cool about them. Some of the feature and benefits of these connectors are they meet all the USB 3.0 specifications. Excellent. Meet the high durability class, meaning 5,000 mating cycles. Okay. Halogen-free housings and a wide range of PCB mounting designs in upright, vertical, right angle orientations. Very cool. Cable assemblies meet all the USB 3.0 specifications, meet high durability class requirements, and selection of halogen-free cables. All right, USB 3 Vision is cool, but sometimes USB isn't what we need. In a lot of my designs, I end up going to my old standby, Ethernet. Is there a way to use Ethernet in these embedded vision applications? Yes, we can, and that is the Gig E Vision. Gig E Vision is a global camera interface standard developed using the Gigabit Ethernet communication protocol. Gig E Vision allows for the fast image transfer using low cost standard cables over very long lengths. Gig E Vision is a widely adopted interface around the world with dozens of leading companies currently offering hundreds of Gig E Vision compliant products. Okay, now we're talking. What's the deal with Gig E Vision compared with plain old vanilla Ethernet? 
that we're used to. These are your normal Ethernet connectors. Gig E Vision offers many benefits. First, fast, high bandwidth, 125 megabytes. Abundant, uncompromised data transfer rates up to 100 meters in length. Standard, low-cost CAT 5E, CAT 6 cables, and standard connectors. Scalable, high scalable to the fast growth of Ethernet. Low-cost, standard hardware and cables. Gig E Vision runs on Molex Magnetic Modular Jacks. Okay, so I'm guessing that since you're from Molex, we're going to talk about why my old junk drawer Ethernet connectors are not the right solution for Giggy Vision. What does Molex bring to the party here? Molex brings a lot to the party here. Molex magnetic modular jacks incorporate wire-wound components in standard RJ45 jacks. Integrated magnetics, resistors, and or capacitors filtered common mode noise. Simplify customer board layouts by reducing the components required and support a wide variety of applications. They support fast Ethernet and gigabit Ethernet applications. Available in single and multi-mold versions for Molex. Integrated magnetics, super cool. <laughs> okay, now along with that, what are the main features of these Molex magnetic modular jacks? If you try saying that four times, Molex mag. Anyway, go ahead. That is tough to say four times fast. Molex magnetic modular jacks features and benefits. They include integrated magnetics. These filter out the common mode noise to provide signal integrity and protects the Phi chip, provides DC isolation, and offers low mode conversions. Molex magnetic modular jacks are fully shielded designs. This helps with the advanced EMI and ESD protection. Okay. They're also IEEE 802.3 compliant. Now you mentioned there were several different options from Molex magnetic modular. Ah, got it. Jacks. That's right. Uh, give me some of the details. So we have three different options on this slide. MX Mag Gigabit Magnetic Jacks, the 85793 Series Gigabit Magnetic Jacks, and the 48025 Series Modular Jack Right Angle with integrated magnetics and LEDs. Cool. As you can see, we have all the connector depths listed there, the different ways of putting them on the board themselves, which are the solder options, the data rates that these connectors operate in. It's got the shielded tabs, the operating temperatures, and most importantly, durability cycles, and how they come packaged to the CM. All right, I'm ready to get started. Where would I go for more information on Molex products for embedded vision? More information, you can go to the Molex website or the Avnet website. No matter the camera interface or bus architecture, Molex offers the appropriate interconnect solutions. SlimStack, like what Chris talked about, the USB 3.0, and the magnetic modular jacks. Admin and Molex have developed design guides to ease connector selection for embedded vision applications. Below is a link through the Avnet website for Molex. All right, well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me, Tony and Chris. It's been great being here and thanks for the opportunity. Thank you as well. Appreciate your time and appreciate the opportunity to talk about the Molex product offering. Before we go, don't forget to click that link. There you can find out more information about embedded vision solutions from Molex. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton. For more Chalk Talks, check out the EE Journal YouTube channel or the on-demand section of eejournal.com.